Okay. So the uh, the porch is four feet wide and twelve feet long. It was a small open porch on the house, hundred year old farmhouse when we got it, and we closed it in, put thermal pane glass in, which is used used glass that we bought for ten dollars a piece. Um, it's super insulated in the ceiling and it's super insulated in the crawl space and then there's a four inch thick reinforced concrete floor and then there's two, four, six, eight, well, eight, six uh, hundred pound LP tanks full of water plus a couple of them that I shortened up to go under the window. Sun shines in, this absorbs heat and then we've got these real well insulated curtains that we close down at night. It also has um, air ducts running into the concrete floor here and then coming out these and in theory the sun shines on these pipes, heats and the air should circulate into the through the floor and up to help warm up the floor but it doesn't really work because these are plastic and they don't conduct heat the way they should be. Sometime I have to replace these with aluminum or something. Um, the uh, curtains are actually the idea came from the roll down fabric livestock barns that you can buy. They have, they have uh, crank up and down sidewalls and basically I made everything except for the worm gear which I had to buy and they're really expensive like $135 a piece for this worm gear but you need something really strong and long lasting for this because we're opening and closing it every day and it's lasted about 10 years so far. This is real heavy. Uh, it's Warm Windows Systems insulated curtain material that we bought at Hancock Fabrics and it was fairly expensive even though we got it on sale enough to do this wall and that one over there which is 16 by 8 uh, about $240 for the fabric. That was the most expensive part of it, everything else I made. But it's rolled up on 4 inch diameter heavy gauge PVC. And I use an electric drill to raise it up and down. I'll just crank it down and then you can see the PVC. One problem after I built it, the curtain shrunk here a little bit, and I've got a spot here I need to fill in in the window here a little bit to make that seal better. But um, so during the daylight, sun shines in here, it absorbs heat, and then we've got some simple things here that we use to seal it better. One on each end. There's about 4,000 pounds of thermal mass in this little 4x12 room between water and concrete. So this, so now it's closed up for the night and we have a cold air return down in the bottom corner where the cold air from the kitchen floor just naturally flows in and the warm air flows into the house. And this back wall is not insulated so a, a certain amount of the heat during the day goes into the house. So it, it does help heat the house during the daytime, but the majority of the heat is absorbed in here. And all this is a fancy trom wall, and the big thing is the curtains, which uh, is the name of the game. We, we probably save more with the curtains than we gain with the solar. But by having both, then we, we do really well. And then we've got another curtain here for this big wall. And here's the catch the insulated curtains. Here's a picture window. They were predicting, see how it's broken? They were predicting uh, cloudy skies one day, so we left the curtains down and went somewhere, and the sun came out and it overheated and broke our picture window. So, uh, and $300 to replace that glass, which I've got the glass sitting out on the porch, but I haven't got around it. So, there's a catch to these insulated curtains, as you better be around so they don't overheat. Um, the other thing, what we would do different on this window and we still might change it is when this curtain is down it'd be nice to leave it down during a cloudy day but then the house is so dark and our plan is to cut a hole in this 
insulated curtain and put at least a two foot square piece of marine grade vinyl or something in there so a little bit of light can come in during the day and then we would just leave the curtain shut on a cloudy day. But as it is now, even on a cloudy day, we open it up, otherwise the house is too dark. But the uh, the curtains save more energy than what we gain with the with the with the solar. Uh, we get quite a bit, quite a bit of uh, um, south and west exposure between the two rooms, and uh, we take advantage of it. It really helps. And then over here is uh, you want to go over here too. There, okay, so that's just two old uh, solar panels that were given to us for free. For, they were out of an old hot water heating system from back in the 70s, and they were junkers. They leaked. I had to take them apart and solder the copper and, and fix them up. And uh, basically, I did uh, thermal siphoning into a 50-gallon uh, pressure tank inside the house. This is this has got 50 gallons of antifreeze in it 50 50 mix and when the sun shines on it the water just automatically flows into the hot water tank and the cold flows down it's automatic and and we use it for space heating basically we got a 50 gallon barrel of of uh, hot water in the house each at the end of each sunny day it, it'll get up to about 140 degrees maybe i guess i've never actually checked check the temperature but it gets hot enough to where you almost burn your hand on it and then that just gives off heat all day and helps helps uh, with heating the house at night. Okay. So the uh, the hot water just the, the, this is filled almost to the top with antifreeze. And I learned uh, I learned by experience that you should have the inlet pipe halfway up so that the water mixes in with the rest. If you put the inlet pipe way up on top, then it just stratifies and ten, tends to stay hot on the top. So I put it halfway down and then in the bottom inside this oak cabinet is an is a um, second pipe that runs to to the bottom of the solar panels and it just naturally siphons uh, on a hot day it, uh, it'll get hot enough to where you can almost burn your hand but like today we only had a couple hours of sunshine and it's it's pretty warm that's 100 degrees maybe and then that just sits there and radiates heat into the house it's pretty simple and the catch to it is if you get even a pinhole leak you'll lose the whole 50 gallons of antifreeze and so far it hasn't leaked but um, it works well. The other thing we learned is that anytime the temperature of the inside of the house is lower than the outside temperature it will continue the thermal siphon so in the summertime we have shut off valves we have to shut them off otherwise on a hot day it'll heat the water in the tank. But it was simple and inexpensive. You don't I mean, need an expansion tank on this? No, it's not under pressure. Oh, it's just sitting there. In fact, this is a this is an air vent right here. Um, it's just a real simple arrangement, uh, and the the catch is uh, if you get a little leak anywhere, you lose the whole works. And uh, I'm a little worried because one of the one of the panels has got some corrosion on the copper, so I may have to take it apart sometime and try to fix that eventually. I guess it will.